your skin, Big Bandish. Hey again, it's Samantha, aka Vegan Acne Suffers, and I'm back with another video for you. In my blog post, Nine Things I Wish I Knew When I Had Bad Acne, I talk a little bit about how I used to really take mean comments to heart and let other people's views, as well as my own distorted views of myself, challenge my, my self-worth. There are two kinds of mean comments, those that come from others and those that come from ourselves. Now the ones that come from others, they can definitely sting and they can burn the old ego, but it's really the mean comments that come from ourselves that are the ones to blame for the way we react to the mean comments that others say about us. What we regularly tell ourselves will either confirm or deny what these people say about us. Maybe I'm oversimplifying a bit when I say this, but I think that really challenging and standing up to the mean comments that other people say really requires that we stand up to ourselves and the mean comments that we say about ourselves. It means that we actively try to stop this negative self-talk because when we challenge those negative, distorted beliefs about ourselves, we're in a place where we know our worth, where we know our value, and those people don't give a crap what other people think of them. For me, to be free from acne, whether or not we still have acne, means to be free from the shame and embarrassment that we feel because of our acne. To be free from all the mean and untrue things that we tell ourselves about our acne. Most of us talk negatively about ourselves daily. And for some people, they even talk negatively about themselves constantly. And for some of us, it's so ingrained in our day-to-day -day activities and who we are and what we do every day that we don't even notice we're doing it. Which is why it's so important to practice mindfulness and to practice being present in the moment. Because only when you're being mindful and present are you able to notice the thoughts and things that pop into your head and to understand how our mind is negatively framing or distorting these images of ourselves. The first thing that I always do when I have a negative thought about myself is I write it down. I just write it down and I sit with it. Sometimes just the act of writing it down, putting my thoughts into words on paper for me to see and visualize, and then to sit with those words and their meanings and to let myself feel them and let myself absorb the, the depth of what I'm saying about myself. Sometimes that is enough for me to sober up and be like, what the frick am I thinking? Like, cut it out and, you know, reverse that behavior. Unfortunately, it's not always so simple. People like myself with um, severe anxiety, depression, other disorders. Stuff like this is a chronic issue. It's not something that it just comes up once and then shoo shoo and it's gone forever. These are things we need to actively work on. I will admit though, writing it down was just a hurdle in and of itself. I was appalled, shocked by the frequency and the intensity of the negative thoughts that I was feeling about myself regularly. And when I mean regularly, I mean like one after the other, after the other, after the other. And it was tough to sit with those thoughts and just feel them. It was tough. But once I sat with them for a while and I, you know, felt ready to take them on, I Allie McBeald myself, I lawyered myself up, and I started asking myself, what evidence do I have that this is true? And most often, the answer is no evidence. I have nothing. I have no proof that this is true. Actually, everything in my life tells me that it is the contrary. And so I write that down, and I write down precisely, talking to myself, how untrue the things I'm saying about myself are. If you can't think of anything that you have as a strong characteristic, I guarantee you somebody else can find something in you that they love about you and they'll find it like that. So don't be afraid to ask for help, but this really should be an exercise that comes from within. It should be an exercise in finding your values and what you value about yourself because really that's all that matters at the end of the day. If you need help finding those values, that's totally okay. 
but don't let somebody else create those values for you. And when I'm writing these things down, even if I don't say it's a core belief I'm still struggling with and you know, acne makes me disgusting, acne makes me gross and these are things we all struggle with. Even if I'm having a hard time saying, yes, I have acne, but, and then finding something positive to say afterward, I find just sticking to the facts is better than nothing. So while you may not be able to put a positive spin on everything, I have acne, but acne is fabulous, then you can always just say, okay, I have acne, but that doesn't affect anything else in my life. I have acne, but I still have lots of friends. I have acne, but I'm still really funny. I have acne, but I'm still enjoying life. Acne doesn't mean this, acne doesn't mean that. And be descriptive, be assertive, talk back to yourself, use adjectives, be elaborate in your discussion about how untrue these negative things you say about yourself are. Because I know you know they're untrue and I know you have evidence to the contrary, so use that. And I keep writing and writing and writing and writing until I've successfully convinced myself, if only for a moment, if only for this specific topic, that it's not true. So I write until I've gassed myself out, until I have no more negative energy about this particular thought, and then I'm done with it. And I put it aside, and I carry on with my day. Even if another negative thought creeps up right away, you know, something else about your acne, that's totally okay, it's totally normal. You just continue this process as much as you can until you have no energy left to do it anymore. And when I'm done with this, each time I do it, I always feel like a little bit of a weight has been lifted from my shoulders. I feel, you know, like I'm unburdened by that thought. Like I said, at least for right now. I don't think you're gonna cure all your acne anxieties in one little exercise writing down your negative thoughts. It doesn't work like that at all. It requires consistency and persistence to challenge these thoughts. Little exercises help to rewire our, our brain just a little bit so that the next time these negative thoughts come up, we don't fall into the same old habits or that we at least have one more reinforcement that enables us to not fall back into these old habits. And when you need to or when you're ready to, you can write down more of these negative thoughts and each one, you should spend time on it individually. And it's gonna be tough and it's gonna mean digging really deep and facing some of your demons. And that just means that you have to sit with them. And you know, sitting with your demons is a great way to get to know them. And you'll start to learn that they're not as awful as they initially seem. And that the stories of their terribleness are over-exaggerated. So not only is it important for you to write these negative thoughts down and talk back to them, but it's also important to replace them with something positive or something realistic so that these negative thoughts have something to counterbalance them. It will take compassion, persistence, consistency, and patience to change your mental process. But the journey is enlightening and invaluable. It's really freeing yourself from the constraints of your acne. When we're capable of ignoring and shutting down those negative comments that we say about ourselves, we're more capable of shutting down the negative comments that come from others. Because once you're in a place where you're capable of objectively stepping back and looking at the situation with all of your personal biases and distortions in mind, you're able to take a non-shameful view of yourself and say, this is me. This is just me. And this is who I am. And that's how it is. And that's okay. I will take many states of being throughout my life and none of them will change my self-worth. And you'll know that anything anybody says about you is either untrue or completely subjective, and it's therefore unimportant, or it's true and you've decided it's unimportant. Who the hell cares if they don't like my pants? Who the hell cares if they don't like my acne? And if you find that something somebody says about you is true and you find it to be important, then you are capable of change. You are capable of growth. You're not expected to be perfect. And you know, that's what human beings are. We are imperfect and we learn as we go along. There's no shame in personal growth and there's definitely no shame in something like acne. To be truly free from acne, we need to accept that people will inevitably have different and sometimes negative opinions. And then we realize that this doesn't affect us. We can be frustrated by the way things 
are and how we think they should be, or we can accept them as they are. And when you begin to deconstruct these repetitive negative thoughts you have about yourself, you'll begin to see that they aren't necessarily true. And once you've done that, you can change those repetitive patterns. Someone famous once said, what other people think of me is none of my business. And I think that's just the most eloquent way to go about it because it really is none of our business what other people think about us. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect you in any which way. And it's none of your business. Once we know who we are and we become more comfortable with ourselves, not only do we take the power away from other people to belittle us and make us feel bad about ourselves, but we also take that power away from things like acne and we give that power back to ourselves. I don't think that any of us will ever be free from acne if we don't learn to stop the negative self-talk. And if we don't learn to stop the negative self-talk, we're always going to be hurt and upset by the things that people say about us, especially if it has to do with our skin and these deeply held beliefs we have about ourselves. If you believe that your acne makes you worthless and somebody tells you your acne makes you worthless, you're going to believe it even more. You're saying there's confirmation, you know, and you need to challenge those beliefs because they're not true. So this was just one little exercise you can do to challenge and stop that negative self-talk. And I hope that if you are doing this, you don't just ignore it and you don't just hope it goes away on its own because things like this, they don't go away on their own. They just snowball and get progressively worse. And it's so, so common for people with acne to have anxiety and depression comorbidities and they go untreated and you know, they are treatable and things like this, this cognitive behavioral approach, these exercises, are well known for changing this negative thought pattern. So I really hope that this video has been helpful for you and that you have found this useful and that you'll try the exercise. All you have to do is when you're being mindful and you're acknowledging your thoughts as you have them, you write down those negative thoughts about yourself as ugly and mean as they are and you hate to write them down because it seems so stupid that you're saying this to yourself. You write them down and you face them and then you challenge them and you tell them they're wrong and you give your evidence and you cite your sources. Every morsel, every shred of evidence you have goes onto that paper. And when you see it and you have diffused the situation yourself and you've talked back to yourself and successfully shown yourself you were wrong, like I said earlier, it's a liberating feeling. So in light of today's video, which may be a little bit heavy for some of you, um. I wanted to ask a lighter question. So what is something that you like to do to relax? So your go-to thing for after a long day, stressed out, you just want to chill. What's your favorite thing to do? Because I think it's just so therapeutic to tune into what we want and just give ourselves the satisfaction of doing that. And for me, I think it's reading. I just love to sit down with a book, especially a really exciting book or one with lots of information in it and just quiet and tea by my side. So what's your favorite thing to do to relax? Leave me a comment below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. There's a hole.